Okay. Here we go. YouTube, what's up? Cause a couple of years ago, it's the American African. This video is about how I've done so far on my one year weight loss journey, but it's a little different, okay? It's, this is not a positive or negative video. This is just a, a truth video where I'm just gonna tell it just like how it is, okay? Um, weight loss for me has been very successful in this period of my life age 31 age 32 I've always really been able to lose weight but I've never really focused enough I've never really concentrated enough I've always been determined but just unfocused enough to get it done done you know one year later I'm 200 pounds down I got about 100 pounds to go because now I'm focused I'm determined I remove distractions I remove negative energy and I just keep it positive and I keep my relationship with God very close and personal. And I know that, you know, it's him that gives me the strength to keep going, you know, through all the ups and downs. You see, weight loss is seen as something that you just do and then it's over. But in my opinion, weight loss never stops, you know. Um, if you have to think about your weight consciously with every single thing you put in your mouth every single thing that you do I mean in my mind that's um that's a sign that you're obesity prone you know and uh, the reason why a lot of us are obesity prone or are obese is because you know we use food to try and remediate issues that we're dealing with in our mind a lot of times subconsciously and I'm not going to say it's okay to do that or it's not okay to do that and the reason I'm not going to say that is that I don't believe that life should be judged I don't believe that life should be put under a microscope to the point where it de, de um, <laughs> you know it, it inhibits you from moving in life it inhibits you from riding the waves of life it inhibits you from progressing See, a lot of times we try and play God. It's human nature, and we judge, and we criticize, and we're hard, and we're harsh, and it's human nature. It's always going to happen. No one can stop it. That's just the way we are. But if you take that approach in life, I mean, you'll never be happy, you know? You have to learn how to ride the waves. It took me 30 years to ride this wave. But guess what? I'm finally up on my surfboard, and I'm, I'm riding that bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm riding that bitch. And I'm happy. I'm happy with my progress. I'm happy with my results. And that's all that matters. Trust me, that's all that matters. My weight loss journey has been so low. I haven't held anyone's hand. No one's held my hand. I'm doing this on my own, just me and God. That's my approach. I wasn't able to begin losing weight. Until I prayed to God about it and told him, I'm ready now and I need you. That's the difference between this weight loss journey that I'm on and all the other ones that I've tried and failed. I'm riding this bitch. You know, I could fall down a thousand times. I'm going to get up a thousand and one. You know, it doesn't matter what anyone believes. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. It doesn't matter what the naysayers say or... People will tell you, oh, you're doing it this way, but you should do it that way. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to get it done. And if I fail, I'm okay with that because I know that I tried the best that I could. But I can't do this anyone else's way. I can't. I have to do this my way. Okay, so within weight loss, um, there's many what's called fad diets. Right, there's many ways to skin the cat, but at the end of the day, one thing that I've learned is that they're all good, right? But in excess, they're all bad, and that's just a general principle of life. Life is all about balance, you know. The globe, the world, it's around for a reason. It's a perfect sphere for a reason, right? It's all about balance. This universe is all about balance. 
okay? And you have to stay balanced as much as possible, but no one's perfect. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. No one does everything right all the time, which is fine. That's a part of balancing itself, the yin and the yang. And uh, to be balanced for someone who's obese, you have to embrace the fact that you it's it's not likely for you to just lose weight and just keep it off. The people that you see showing that life are not the 99% of the population that's obese. Of the population that is actually obese. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not them. It's the one percenters. The people that just lose weight and keep it off, they're one percenters. You know? That's like watching a celebrity, right, that's super rich and saying, I want to be that. Yeah, you can want it. Yeah, you can try for it. And yeah, you may get it. But how many people that actually try to actually achieve that? So the message is really think about what you're capable of, what you can achieve, but always shoot for the stars. You understand? But the reason why you have to think about what you're capable of is that when you shoot for the stars and you land on the moon, you need to be satisfied landing on the moon. You can't be content. Because that's stressful in itself. And a lot of food that we consume as obese people is out of stress. We're good. We're full. We don't need any more food, but we're still eating. Why do we do it? it? A lot of people say, well, food tastes good. Yeah, food tastes good. It always tastes good. But if food tastes good, it always tastes good. And that's the reason why we eat. Then we'd all be a million pounds, right? There has to be a limit. The reason why most of us who eat overeat is because that's what we cling to in order to deal with stress, in order to deal with life. Um, in my life, I had a stressful childhood and I dealt with it through video games, food, at one point sports and activities, you know. But I never dealt with it with real therapy. You know, those are all things that were like workarounds or things that just take my mind off what's really going on. But I never really addressed it. But a lot of y'all that are actually on my channel might actually know me in real life. And it's a lot of you that actually helped me or helped me to ultimately overcome obesity. You know, by allowing me to talk about it without judgment, by allowing me to talk about it and just listening, that's how I was able to offload a lot of that stuff that I dealt with in my childhood that I never really talked about. Just talking about it with you, but really, it's you just listening to me. That's how I deal with it. That's how I dealt with it. I actually ultimately believe that I've overcame most of the things that I saw in my childhood, most of the things I experienced in my childhood. And it's not it's not like like to me, it's normal because that was that was, that's what was normal to me. And one day I'll post a video really diving into it. But today is about one year on the weight loss journey. Alright. Me, I'm positive. I have good vibes. I'm happy I've made it so far. I mean every day and every time I look at my old pictures to my current pictures. I don't know why, but it's hard for me to even say, oh, yeah, that was me. I remember that. Because you know what's crazy? I don't remember that. Even pictures from just this time last year. I know that that was me. I know that I was living like that. I know that. But all I know is me now. All I see is me now. Because I take life one day at a time, and I can't live in the past. I see it. It doesn't actually serve as a reminder for me. It's just like a memory. Can I get that big again? Yes. Anyone in, anyone can get that big again. You know, anyone can get big. Why won't I get that big again? Because the things that used to turn me to food, the things that used to turn me to eat food no longer do that. You know? Um, when I'm stressed out, do I still eat? At times, yes. But most of the time when I'm eating now, when I'm eating like junk or I'm eating excessively, it's just due to happy times 
Whereas before it was due to the opposite. Is that a complete 180? I don't know. I don't know the answers to everything. And no one does. You know, no one has all the answers. All I know is where I am one year later. I'm in a good place, a positive place. I made a lot of progress. I made a lot of change. I understand food. I understand nutrition. Um, I don't hate myself when I make poor mistakes. Even when I make poor mistakes for one month straight, I don't hate myself. I understand that it's part of the process. And I understand that nothing changes overnight. Nothing even changes after. Well, something's changed, but, you know, not everything will be completed in one year. When I started my journey, I marked it as 1,100 days. I said, in 1,100 days, I'm going to defeat obesity in my life. When I started this journey, there was no communication with anyone. I didn't tell anyone I was starting, and I was part of of it like actually I told one person I told one person I told my girlfriend at the time I was starting but other than that I didn't tell anyone and the reason for that is that a lot of people um, channel how they feel about their selves or what they've seen onto you and that's something that you don't need you just need positivity positivity and people that just listen right you have to be mentally strong to go on a weight loss journey when you're coming from a place of obesity. There's people who are just overweight. There's people who are just obese. And there's people who are morbidly obese. Obviously, I was morbidly obese. You know, what's the difference? When someone's overweight, the way I personally see it is that occasionally they make some poor choices. When someone's obese, the way I see it is in life, they've chosen to make poor choices okay consciously and they they see what it's doing but they're all unable to overcome and when i think of a morbidly obese person i think of someone who makes poor choices consciously and subconsciously um they know it's detrimental to their life their health because they can really see it they want to change they try to change no one understands them and life is tough and most of the time, we crawl into a box where some of us die. You know, I almost died. I almost died. I want to say it was 2014. You know, 2014, there was a day I was on a stretcher. I was in an ambulance truck. I was being rushed to the hospital. I was on an oxygen tank. You know, they were giving me nebulizers. Nothing was working, you know. And I believe that's when God intervened into my health situation in my life. He's intervened in my life many times, you know. But as far as my health goes, I believe that was the day he intervened. No, I didn't see the flashing lights and think I was about to die. I knew I was going to die. You understand? I knew I was about to die. I 100% knew I was going to die. And I get, you know what was crazy? I didn't think deeply of it. I didn't like sit there and be like, oh my God, I'm gonna, I didn't panic. I just was kind of like, and it's like life was like, on that day, everything was in slow motion. I could see everything clearly. I could see what the nurses were doing. I could see what the hospital staff were doing, you know. And then on that particular day, I actually started off at um urgent care. I drove myself to urgent care. I could barely walk from my car door to the front door of the urgent care. I had to walk so slow and I had to take the smallest steps. Because anytime I would try and take a full step, I'd be gassing. I'd be out of breath. I'd be trying to hit my inhaler. I should have went straight to ER. But I never took asthma serious. I didn't think it was a joke or anything, but I just could not believe that I could have asthma. And part of that is my culture. The culture I grew up in says you have to be strong at all times. You can't be sick. There's no such thing as mental illness. Everyone just has to be strong. It's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just the truth of the situation. You know, I've used that mentality to help me in life. 
but that mentality has also almost cost me my life. That's just balance. You know, when you do something in excess or too extreme, that's what happens. Um, yeah, so I, re I remember that day, like yesterday. And the only person that I've ever told about that day, or let me say, the only person who really witnessed that day was my roommate, my good friend Gary. He's the only person that witnessed it because he's the one who picked me up from the hospital when I was done and took me to my car where I drove home but um after that I began to see life a bit differently but it, it wasn't just like a complete change obviously because it took me until you know it took me five years later before I actually did the damn thing in 2016 I tried in 2016 I tried to do my damn thing but um I allow someone to speak negativity into my life, which I would never allow again, you know. So, one year later, I preach positivity. I preach success. I preach trial and error to the core. Okay? Please don't believe that there's one way to lose weight. There's one way only. Please don't be so overly critical of yourself. Um... And please understand that the way I'm doing it is not the way that maybe you should do it or the way he or she, he should do it or she should do it. I understand that's why people gravitate towards YouTube videos is to be inspired. But YouTube isn't always the best source of information or a certain individual on YouTube may not always be the best source of information or best source of inspiration. I aim to inspire. I didn't create this channel to inspire anyone I just created it to document my journey with a few close friends but it may turn into something else who knows like I can't I can't say what tomorrow brings um so yeah one year later as you can see from the pictures the videos it's been a lot of change physically a lot of change that you can see I remember in the first three months, I couldn't see any change. And I had lost like 50 pounds at least by that point. I think it took like six months before I could really, really see it. And I remember when I used to share pictures with people in the first like six months, I remember some people would tell me I should try harder. <laughs> like people would actually tell me like what I was doing wasn't good enough. But don't get it twisted. There were a lot of people that were like, Wow, man, you're doing good. Keep it up, you know? I don't know what to say. Like, there's nothing you can do about negativity. Like, it's always going to come your way. All I can say is that I personally haven't figured out how to defeat negativity, but I don't allow it to affect my, my weight, my health. Mentally, it affects me. Emotionally, it probably affects me. But... Physically, I won't allow it to affect me. And the way I the way I approach it is like this: every day is a new day, it's a start, it's a new beginning. So I start off every day strong, right? I start off every day with my vitamin, my vitamins. I try and start off every day with some sort of exercise, but I try and do it in a way where it's not so conscious. It's just something that I enjoy doing. So I won't say, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna do uh, one thousand push-ups and forty-five sit-ups and this, this, and that. Because I'm personally not ready to commit to exercise in that sort of fashion, in that sort of way. I have to lose more weight, right? I'm still trying to <laughs> get myself off the mat, off the floor when I do burpees, you know? I'm still trying to do a real squat where I come down fully, a real deadlift, you know? Like, everything has stages. There's a process behind it. Now, I know when most people post videos like this, they want the views. They want the hits, you know. I could personally say I've never created a video for views, for hits. If five people watch it, fine. If one million people watch it, fine. I create these videos just to be truthful, document my journey, and keep it real. Because it might be 30 years from now, it might be tomorrow. But I know one day someone will find this and it will help them. Right? And 
just one small little way or another, it will help them. That's where I am right now, and that's why I create my videos right now. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. I won't talk about the negative sides of my imperfections. That's for me to deal with or not deal with. I'm just going to talk about the positive sides of me, my life, where I am. I talk about the negative effects of things such as fasting, keep ketosis, things of that nature. I talk about them in my videos, but I don't necessarily create it as a topic of my video and pinpoint down on it because there's so many videos like that on YouTube from experts or so-called experts that you can really dive into, you know. You want to know 10 reasons why you should do keto diet? There's a video for that. You want to know 10 reasons why you shouldn't do it? There's a video for that. You can pretty much find all that information. There's no point in me rec recreating that. I feel like the only thing that I, I have to give, that I want to give, is just my journey, you know? Up close and personal, you in, you in my bedroom with me, you in my kitchen with me, you on my walks with me, you're in the gym with me, you're in the kitchen with me as we cooking up, chefing up, you know? That's what it is. So yeah, again, I know that this is not the typical video people will come to expect when someone says, hey, in one year, I lost 200 pounds. I don't want it to be. I want I want some people to watch this video and just click off. I want some people to watch this video and subscribe. But I want it to be based off of the information I'm telling you. The words that's coming out of my mouth in the way that I'm saying it. If it gravitates towards you, please like, comment, subscribe. If it doesn't, you know, there's plenty of other channels out there, you know. One of the movies that I really love is 300. You know, a small army defeating a massive one. 300, the Spartans. I'm a Spartan. Right now, I have like 300 subscribers with Spartans. Small army, strong army. We're going to push through. We're going to push through obesity. We're going to push through weight gain, weight loss. And ultimately, ultimately, it may take years. It may take months. We'll learn how to really deal with this, this demon. Right? But I really believe that you beat the darkness with lightness. I really believe in that balance. And every day I wake up positive. I jump out of bed almost every morning. You know, I would say 99 out of 100 mornings, I'm jumping out of bed. And I'm just, I just start moving around. When I was obese, I could never, I'm still obese, by the way. But when I was like, you know, at my peak weights, I could never do that. Never. I, I'm, I was slow to get out of bed. I didn't really want to do anything other than play video games, eat, play on my computer, listen to music, drive around, drink, smoke, eat, you know. Now it's completely different. I wake up every morning looking to be active, thinking about food, excited to eat clean food, thinking about my progress in terms of strength, in terms of my lungs, my conditioning. I haven't had an asthma attack in like a year or so, you know? Just thinking about positive effects of weight loss. So, that's, 20, that's like 20 minutes of positivity, right? All right, so we talked about balance. Just to give this some balance, the negatives, the negatives, the negatives, the negatives of weight loss, of fast weight loss, of fad diets, of water, of, of, of over fasting, okay, water fasting, long periods of time over and over. Um, let me see if I keep it short and sweet. Basically, none of us really know what's going on in our body, right? Even with a blood test, you still don't really know. You have an idea. You can create a picture, but no one really knows. Um, 
um, I've had certain pains, certain experiences through water fasting, such as like right now, I have this pain in my the right side of my neck. You know, I looked it up. It could be thyroid. It could be this. It could be that. I mean, who knows? I can go to my doctor and get diagnosed, but I'm I'm just I don't want to rely on him. You know, I want to figure things out on my own. That's what keeps me waking up early every morning and going, you know. It's it's something that keeps my brain working. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting an analysis from experts. Nothing wrong with that. But just where I am right now in my journey, I try and do it on my own for the most part. Um. So, in the medical professions, all right, um, they they believe in balance, which is good. Um, but of course, when you're doing something extreme, such as a fat diet, such as water fasting, there's no balance. It's just, it's one extreme, right? And due to you going from one extreme, it's likely you'll go to the other extreme. I've noticed throughout, even though I've lost 200 pounds, it could have been 300, you know, that's just the truth of it. It could have been the total thing that I wanted. But because but because I go from one extreme to the other, it is where it is. But the let's be real here: to lose two hundred pounds in four hundred days. Is, I mean, what else? Can, I mean, you know, it's not a bad thing. Could I have done more? Yes. Could I have done less? Yes. You know, but who cares? Like, I'm good with it. I like where I'm at. Um. So yeah, losing weight. And the way that I did it, it can cause someone who's not mentally strong or doesn't know what they're doing, doesn't have any plan, to easily, easily fluctuate back to where they started from. Easily. I think there's a lot of people who who are watching my channel because they want to see me fail. I shouldn't say a lot. I should say there are some people. They don't believe that. I can water fast six months and keep the weight off. They don't believe it. In fact, when they see that I've even gained five pounds, they probably say, oh, shit, yeah, here he goes. I knew that wasn't the way. He should have just ate balanced meals, you know? But nope, I'm not going to eat balanced meals. You know why? Because something I've learned is that I don't enjoy them. Now, food isn't for enjoyment, some would say. I disagree. I believe that part of food is for enjoyment. That's why there's spices. That's why there's sugar. That's why there's salt. That's why there's pepper. That's why we've learned to grind them up in certain ways. That's why we've made, learned to make fancy dishes. Food is for enjoyment. You know, even though food is fuel, fuel can be enjoyed. You know, we are not cars. We create cars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, the idea that we need to fuel our body. It's okay to have as an analogy, but it's not realistic in totality. All right. Food is for enjoyment to a certain extent. It's about learning to control that enjoyment, you know, and ultimately that's why my journey is 1100 days because when I binge, I binge and when I fast, I fast and that's my balance right now. One extreme to the other. I'm not in the middle. Honestly, I don't see myself being in the middle ever. I see myself binging less, you know. But the only way I can see myself binging less is doing less extreme diets, slowly but surely. But I enjoy binging. I enjoy going to a buffet and tearing that shit up. I enjoy that shit. It's fun to me. It's fun to me. You know, I go there. I eat a lunch there and I don't eat for the rest of the day. And then I fast for, you know, two or three days. I enjoy that. Some people say that's a bad diet. That's this, that's this, that's that. That's their opinion, you know. For me, that's my life. That's how I've always been from birth. I don't believe that there's one way to live life that everyone needs to follow. I believe you just need to learn how to control yourself in the lifestyle that you live. Because at the end of the day, we all are going to die. 
Everyone has to die. It's not a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. That's the balance of the universe. And that's the end. Raw, rough, rugged, rowdy. That's who I am. That's who I always be. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. You got something you want to tell me about your weight loss journey? I love to hear it. Hit me up. Peace.